Hi there, Grade 12 College. It's Faisal here with your class of the day for uh, Grade 12 College, June 10th. So let's get right down to the business, uh, which is the Hound of the Baskervilles. Let's talk a little bit about the chapters for today. And then uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about your final project, the CPT, uh, at the end of this video here. So let's get started. So, chapter five. Oop. No, don't do that. Go back. There we go. <clears throat> chapter five. Uh, we see Sherlock sort of making some of his opening moves here in this attempt to uh, solve this case, right? Now, a very important thing to pay attention to in order to understand this story is money, right? Specifically, inheritance, right? Henry is now the uh, owner of the house and the fortune and everything like that, right? But uh, the way it works is it's all based on a will, right? So when you make a will, you designate this the person who's supposed to get the money, right? And then there's a whole bunch of laws and regulations concerning, okay, who gets the money if this person dies? And who gets the money if that person dies, right? So that is what, uh, you know, this whole thing it seems to revolve around. Now, oh, crazy cat over there. Uh, this story uh, does detail some of the things that will happen if uh, Henry died, right? So let's see here. Uh, it says, oh, let me just find the spot. So uh, it says here in chapter five, right? First of all, uh, the worth of the the estate, right, the inheritance for Sir Henry, is seven hundred and forty thousand pounds, right? Holmes raises eyebrows in surprise. I had no idea that so gigantic a sum was involved," said he. Sir Charles had the reputation of being rich, but we did not know how rich he was until he we came to examine his securities. The total value of the estate was close to. Uh, on to a million, right? So this is back in the 19th century, right? So, uh, I mean, a million dollars is a lot of money now, but back then, that's even more, right? You know, sort of multiply it by 10, so tens of millions of dollars, right? So a lot of money is at stake here, right? And Holmes is right to say, Dear me, it is a stake for which a man might well play a desperate game, and one more question, Dr. Mortimer. Supposing that anything happened to our young friend here, you will forgive the unpleasant hypothesis, who would inherit the estate? And uh, Mortimer says, since Roger Baskerville, Sir Charles' younger brother, died unmarried, the estate would descend to the Desmonds, who are distant cousins. James Desmond is an elderly clergyman in Western Moorland. Thank you. These details are all of great interest. Have you met Dr. James Desmond? Yes, he once came down to visit Sir Charles. He is a man of venerable appearance and of saintly life. I remember that he refused to accept any settlement from Sir Charles, though he pressed it upon him. And this man of simple tastes would be the heir to Sir Charles' thousands. He would be the heir to the estate because it, that is entailed. He would also be the heir to the money, unless it were willed otherwise by the present owner, who can, of course, do with what, what he likes with it. So... What that means is that there's a lot of money at stake here. So, uh, Charles died and the money went to Henry. Now, Henry is obviously not a suspect, by the way, because he was in uh, North Amer in America, right? So he's not a suspect in the death of uh, Charles, right? But if Henry dies too, then this priest uh, will get the money. Although, as it says, the priest doesn't seem to want anybody, so it's kind of a strange thing, and you should definitely be thinking about money when it comes to figuring out this particular case. So, what we see in this chapter, besides that little bit about money, is a lot of Sherlock's ideas start to uh, sort of fail, right? He's investigating in a lot of different ways, right? One thing he does is he looks into this guy called Barrymore, right? To see if he's the one who's following uh, Henry around London, right? But they find out Henry Barrymore is at the hall in Baskerville, right? 
So that is uh, the first thing we find out. And you'll remember from last uh, chapter that uh, Holmes hired a guy called Kitewright to go look for newspapers in every hotel. That fails too, right? No, not able to find anything like that. And the most interesting thing for Holmes's perspective is they find the guy who's uh, was driving that cab that was following, um, you know, uh, Henry. Right, so they find the cab driver. By the way, I, did I mention these cabs would not be like car cabs? They would be horse-drawn carriages, right? Because uh, this is right before automobiles became a thing, right? So you'd be driving a horse-drawn cab. So whenever they say, let's call a cab, they mean a horse, right? So not, not a car, right? Cars are coming in about 20 years after Sherlock Holmes. Nevertheless... He goes to this guy and asks him, hey, who was this guy who you were driving around earlier following? And here's what we get. This is still chapter five. My good fellow, this is a very serious business and you may find yourself in a pretty bad position if you try to hide anything from me. You say that your fair told you that he was a detective. Yes, he did. When did he say this? When he left me? Did he say anything more? He mentioned his name. Holmes cast a swift glance of triumph at me. Oh, he mentioned his name, did he? That was imprudent. What was the name he mentioned? His name, said the cabman, was Sherlock Holmes. So, uh, Holmes's uh, leads here all fall apart, right? Uh, and, you know, the guy who was following uh, Henry said his name was Sherlock Holmes, right? Apparently as a sort of like, he could see that Sherlock was chasing him, and he sort of left that as a as a bit of a jab at Sherlock Holmes, right? Sort of a way of taunting him. So, Holmes loves this, right? This is a great thing as far as Sherlock Holmes is concerned, because to him, it's a challenge, right? This is a criminal that has got some smarts, so what he feels after... Uh, hearing this is uh, that, uh, you know, this is amazing. And then, as it says, then he burst into a hearty laugh. A touch, Watson, an undeniable touch, said he. I feel a foil as quick and supple as my own. He got home upon me pretty heart very prettily that time. So his name was Sherlock Holmes, was it? <laughs> yes, sir, that was the gentleman's name. Excellent. Tell me where you picked him up and all that occurred. So, to Holmes, a smart criminal is good, right? Because, of course, Sherlock Holmes likes to ha uh, be challenged. So, the investigation goes on, and the new plan is that they're going to send Watson to Baskerville by himself uh, while Sherlock stays away, right? Sherlock says that, well, I'm busy in London, I need to stay here, I'll send Watson and he will... Uh, keep tabs on things. By the way, you should note, if you're a good mystery solver, that the boots are still going missing, right? Which is a unusual thing there, right? So the boot thing is still happening, and that's sort of a small detail that you should continue to mind. So, nevertheless, Sherlock is off to, or Watson is off to the Baskerville No. Chapter 6 is a fairly straightforward chapter, right? They've gotten to Baskerville Hall, so they're no longer in London. They're in this countryside area, right? And it's, you know, a rural area, not many people living around uh, there, right? So it's just a remote sort of farmland type area, right? I showed you guys earlier a picture of a moor. Why don't I show you? So this is a moor, right? What you see there, right? Uh, grasslands, trees, right? That kind of place, right? Rural area. So chapter six is Watson traveling there. Sherlock Holmes is no longer there, so it's just poor Dr. Watson by himself, right? And we see that there are a couple of other people around. Uh, Dr. Mortimer lives around there, right? So he is... Uh, a local, right? We've already met him. Then we've got Stapleton, right? Uh, and his sister, uh, 
who is Stapleton is a biologist, uh, or they call him a naturalist, but it's basically a, bio, a biologist of a kind. He's someone living in the area as well. And then there's another guy named Mr. Franklin, right? And this area is, again, you know, you get to learn about uh, the place they've been staying, right? You know, the trees and everything like that. So, you know, read it carefully and try to pay attention to the small details. Now, uh, is there anything else I want to say about this chapter? It's a pretty straightforward chapter. Uh, any questions you guys might have, like, please feel free to answer, ask me, right? I haven't been getting too many questions this week. I'm surprised. I guess hopefully it's because the story is straightforward. But if you have any questions, do let me know. Anyway, so we're going to go forward with this thing. And uh, I'm going to say we have to speed up a little bit, by the way, guys, because, you know, uh, the class is coming to an end. We've got about... Uh, what is it, 10 days, 10 more classes or something like that. So we've got to speed up a bit here. So for tomorrow, let's get to the end of chapter nine, right? And I'll have another question for you then, by the way, right? And uh, let's let's try to wrap, uh, get a little further into this, right? By the way, if you haven't already, please do the question uh, that I assigned yesterday that's this one about the supernatural and science right according to your view of the world are there things that cannot be explained by scientific observation right make sure you answer that one soon um we want to get as many of these done as possible before we go on to your final assignment right the final assignment by the way is going to be a second essay right it's going to be an essay on sherlock holmes Right, and it's going to be uh, going to be uh, about five to six paragraphs, right? So a little bit long, about the same length as the first one, right? But uh, you know, with the potential for it to be longer. I'll give you the questions. Let's say this Friday. I should give you them to you sooner rather than later, right? But this is uh, to be handed in through Google Classroom, like just like everything else. And it's going to be due on uh, June 24th, right? Because the last day for handing in marks for me is June 26th, and I need some time to uh, mark them, right? So I'll give you the assignment. Uh, I'll give you the questions on Friday at the latest, right? And it will be uh, due on June 24th, right? So hopefully you'll have at least a solid week to work on this. What that means for you guys is it's to your advantage to read this thing forward and to, you know, uh, be ahead, right? Because you don't want to be working on this on June 23rd. Technically, it'll be possible for you to finish this essay you know, way before it's even uh, due, right? So I'm going to give you guys as much time as I can, at least a week, in order to uh, get started on it and ask me questions and everything like that. So, all right, guys, read to the end of chapter nine uh, tomorrow, right? And let's continue on. Oh, by the way, we're going to be having our uh, weekly meeting and discussion uh, on Thursday at two o'clock, right? So let me put that on the screen. Uh, so uh, online seminar, our meeting will happen Thursday, uh, June 10, 11, 11th at 2 p.m. on Google Meetings, right? So we'll we'll have our weekly uh, business then. All right, guys, uh, that's it for today. I hope you guys are enjoying the story. I hope you guys are doing well, and I will see you tomorrow.